Caribbean history in itself, right? We start off around twenty to twenty three thousand years ago, right? Um, within this region specifically, right? The um the the Eastern Asian region, right? So we start off speaking about these people, right? These groups of persons, um, the of Asian descent, right? In a sense, right? Well, they were Asians at the time. Right, that really passed over the Bering Strait or the Bering Land Bridge at a specific point in time, right, at around 20,000 years ago. Right, so we've all have looked at that within high school, right, we've all looked at it in some way, right, looking at the fact that these, indig these persons would have actually moved over within the last ice age they're about and traveled through North America, right, through different means. They traveled through M North America, um, in a specific nomadic way, right? So we call these people nomads because they have no specific sedentary type of living, right? Sedentary meaning that they would have a connection to the land specifically, that they would have built permanent settlements, right? So they are what we generally would have called nomads specifically, right? And what we're talking about is around 20,000 years ago, right? Around 20,000 years ago. Right? And we're speaking about the nomadic people entering the Caribbean, right? So they're getting to the Caribbean specifically. And what I'm speaking about here specifically is the advent of that. So they're nomadic people. They are what we would discuss as or we would describe as um, something in a Eurocentric point of view as primitive people. Right, so these persons had no specific kind of physical um, infrastructure or anything like that. So they would have been surviving off of herds, right, of bison or whatever type of herding animals that would live in North America at the time. They would have lived off of these animals, right, hunting them and gathering grains from the surrounding vegetation, right. So these persons would have existed there within that period of time. And a couple thousand years after, right, um, or within a thousand years um, here or there, right, they would have traveled through North America, right, into Central America, right? So Central America, we're talking about the countries comprising of Mexico, um, Honduras, Nicaragua, Ecuador, San Salvador, Costa Rica, Panama, some, well, I mean, the Western part of Colombia, right? So we're speaking about these countries um, that are normally known as mainland territories within the Caribbean, right? So based on your definition of the Caribbean, they would have entered the Caribbean, right? Or within a thousand years there um, from the 20,000 years ago around to 19,000 years ago, right? And what we have forming are different types of civilizations as they settle because they would have settled going throughout, right? So I'm just giving you guys the background information before we get into the nitty gritty of it, right? And it's a part of the indigenous um, migration, right? We're talking about their migration from East Asia, right? Over the Bering Land Bridge, through North America, through Central America, into South America, then eventually into the Caribbean, right? So if you think about those spheres of influence, right that's generally where we're coming from so we're looking at the fact that they would have traveled through north america into south america right so and they would have to pass through central america i hope you guys are understanding the picture are you guys following so far i'm not sure if you guys need a map to represent what i'm speaking about you guys need a map to represent what i'm speaking about or is everything fine thus far This file is far. All right. Because I know that some persons work better through, you know, the images, right? But I'm going to bring up um, Google Earth anyways, right? And we'll look at the map, right? And recap what I'm saying. So these indigenous, well, these per people, right, um, would have traveled through Central America, leaving different cultures, right? So some persons may have, well, and North America as well. So let's see in North America, they would have lived different cultures, that we would um, have spoken, well, some persons would have spoken about, 
right some persons heard of the different tribes the native americans these are the descendants of the native americans the apachean tribes right the iroquois all these different types of tribes we don't really discuss it in caribbean history because it's not caribbean history right and within central america we have the um the rise of different um cultures such as the mayan culture and the olmec culture as well as the aztec culture right so you guys would have heard about these different types of cultures before right and then they would have entered south america right persons doing history unit one would have noted the tupinamba culture all right um the tupinamba are a different group of um indigenous people right to the atlantic region specifically right but there is a divergence within um the groups each time they settle right each time they settle they leave behind a culture and move on now within the area that we call venezuela modern time venezuela within an area that we call the orinoco valley right the groups of persons would have been living there so the who we call the indigenous amerindians would have been living in modern day um venezuela at this time right so i hope you guys are just following it's like it's like a story right so they would have faced a lot of hardship they would have faced flooding they would have faced um maelstroms of hurricanes etc right that may that would have made their living within the um within south america a little bit difficult right and because of that they would have actually traveled right into some parts of the lesser antilles right let me actually stop sharing here and get to the map because somebody requested the map so let me actually get to the map and we'll just continue to speak about it all right um let me get there all right let me know you, when you can see the map you guys can see the map let me check the chat yes sir all right you guys can see the map all right so we're looking at what's happening within the um the movement of the indigenous people into the caribbean at the time right if we can visualize it earlier i was speaking about the movement of the persons from well the people right from of asian descent the eastern asian um a set of persons would have traveled over the bering land bridge or the bering um street right which is here between modern day russia and alaska right so there there are either there are there are actually two tiny islands right here right so russia and the united states really really close just a couple of miles off right and in the in the ice age around twenty thousand years ago some persons um would have theorized that there's actually there was actually an ice bridge some persons would have said that there's an actual land bridge but you guys go more in depth in that in history unit one right but they would have traveled through rush modern day russia into the united into the modern day united states and north america generally right and traveled throughout this entire region traveling southwards right southwards throughout north america into central america and we saw some of these countries that we've seen before right so well we saw some of these countries full stop right so mexico guatemala honduras these different nation nations right so within these regions we have the development of the aztec right and the olmec cultures and the mayan cultures that some persons can appreciate right these cultures still exist mayan populations aztec populations still exist not sure about the olmec populations right but they would have traveled throughout and into south america within this general region hopefully you guys can see my curse all right within this general region right there would have been struggles there would have been flooding and hurricanes and all sorts of different things because you know these are hurricane -prone regions right and it would have made life particularly hard for these people right not only that but the emergence of different types of cultures right would have posed a challenge right so we have the emergence of um well let's see um different types of cultures we know um the uh, the arawak culture right which would 
speak about the subset Tainos, right? And we'll speak about the Kalinago culture, right? History didn't want people to go deeper into the Tupinamba culture, but we won't talk about that, right? So we know that there would be some amount of conflict between them, right? The Kalinago culture being a more militar mi militaristic um, type of culture with a little different ideology than the Tainos, right? The Tainos were also militaristic. They did have weapons. They did defend themselves, right? But they did not have militarism at the heart of their culture, right? So they were more peaceful in that type of sense, right? The reason why I don't use words like warlike and brutal is because those are Eurocentric versions of what we're talking about, right? Because in order to put down a people or a culture, Right? We tend to use negative connotations to describe the people. That is not what I do in history. We can't be biased. right? So I'm not going to be using Eurocentric words that make these people sound like they were animals. They were not. They were militaristic just like the Europeans. right? So they were militaristic and the Tinos were not as militaristic as them. right? And they would have had centuries of conflict. right? And persons would have spoke about the population of the Caribbean islands via this dynamic right as the as as the arab walks would have traveled through modern day venezuela into modern day trinidad and tobago grenada barbados right into these islands and as the kalinagos followed suit right the arawaks would have you know moved as well right so what we're looking at generally is the movement of these people from the heart here um of this south american area right and they would have been moving throughout the Lesser Antilles. So the Lesser Antilles would have would have had, in some cases, all the remnants of Caribbean culture. There are more um, ancient remnants of Caribbean culture. When we speak about around 3,000 years ago, the emergence of the Redware culture, right? We spoke about, we, well, uh, those type of things um, emerged, right? So within the Caribbean, we had sedentary life really um sedentary civilization started to emerge within the caribbean as these people started to settle and actually colonize these islands right so we have the emergence of different types of cultures right we have the um the emergence of sedentary lifestyles farming building construction political systems right so these persons had a wide range of things that would classify them as civilized people right now from my perspective, since I look at history at a little, a little bit more deeper than most persons would have, right? I'm going to be using these perspectives, analyzing the indigenous people of the Caribbean from a non-biased standpoint, right? So the indigenous people of the Caribbean that we would speak about in Caribbean soils, who are they? What are the two main groups that we speak about? Anyone? The two main groups. Would it be the Kalinagos and the Tainos, sir? All right. The Kalinagos and the Tainos. Exactly. Right. Lovely. So we're going to be speaking about the Kalinagos and the Tainos. Right. That little um kind of timeline, kind of history thing that I gave you guys a while ago. Right. The movements from um Eastern Asia through um through North America. That is really the migration of the indigenous people, you know. Right. That's really how they moved from the end of the first ice age. They would have followed herd animals. Right, because they were hunter gatherers, they were nomadic people, they were not sedentary, right? So they had no physical connection to the land. So what they would do is follow the herds to survive. Because what you do, you know, you don't plant anything, you don't farm, there's no way you can sustain a population. Right? The thing is no, one man can survive off of probably a four square meter land, you know, if it is farmed. But if you're not farming, one man can probably survive over 10,000 square meters because he would have to gather um, grains and stuff like that to eat. He would have to catch the occasional rabbit. He would have to hunt the occasional bison, right? So it was much harder for these people to live. And in order for them to live, they would have to travel and follow these herd animals, right? Because if the herd leaves you behind, you will starve. So they followed these animals throughout North America, right? And moving away from the cold as well, right? And moved over into these regions, right? Into the specific region we can define to be Caribbean, right? Notice I didn't say the Caribbean region, no. We define it as the Caribbean region, right? So we're going to be discussing the Kalinago and the Taino, right? And before 
well i'm going to be looking at come at, at um specific stages right because when we compare civilizations and cultures we must do it in a specific way we must speak about their political system their social system their religion their hierarchy right there are different topics and subheadings that you use to divide right or to describe or to compare and contrast different cultures and that is what we're going to be doing now now before we start what are the political attributes of the Taino people that you guys have looked at who leads them? What is their political structure? How did they organize themselves? Can somebody speak on that for me, please? How did they organize themselves? Who was their leader? Who was their leader? Sir, would it be a um, religious leader? A religious leader? A religious leader? Interesting. I mean, Interesting. I mean just no, sir. Religion. Sir, probably I not remember know. properly, but... but I don't remember, but... honestly. You don't remember all right that's fine do you, know, do you remember the name of the leader though does anybody remember the name of that leader okay tasha has okay, tasha. 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 wonderful thank wonderful. you wonderful thank you so Sasha. So right the cacique right so the cacique was the leader of the taino specifically all right um the cacique was generally hereditary love that right um and the cacique is generally a male figure right one thing that we could note about the the indigenous people of the caribbean at this time right most of the societies were led from a male perspective right most societies are just like that the higher the patriarchy does exist across most if not well most let me not say if not all because it's not all of them but most civilizations right but it was possible for a woman to become a cacique one of the most fierce defenders of the Taino culture, right, who fiercely defended her people, right, from the Spanish was a woman, right? So they, it was possible to have a female cacique, right? Just letting you guys know that in case there are any misconceptions that the cacique had to be male, right? The cacique was a religious leader as well. The cacique was in charge of religious ceremonies, right? Um, he was in charge of, you know, dealing with um legal pers um disputes anything like that any land disputes or anything like that he was responsible at giving out punishment when crimes were committed and yes they did have a legal system all right so those are some things that the cacique could have done can anybody list anything else that the cacique could have done anything else notable for the cacique i'm just um if you hear anything in the background i'm looking for my history unit one textbook wonderful i found it all right, let's go. Can anybody let me know what other roles the cacique play? To see if you guys know the information, all right? Oh, like in Hispaniola, wonderful. That leader was in Hispaniola, Tasha. Lovely. What other roles did the cacique play? If you don't know, you know, you just let me know that you don't really have an idea. It's fine. It's fine, you know. Just let me know. Nobody else knows any ideas of what the cacique could have done. Okay, they were a spiritual leader, all right. Religious ceremonies communicated with the Zemis. Zemis. Who were the Zemis? Who were the Zemis? So, Go ahead, Trump. The Zemis were their, in quote unquote, their god. Yeah, it was their god. And it was based on ancestral, I think. On their ancestors? Interesting. Okay, so they would have practiced that type of religion, right? The type of religion is polytheistic animism. Animism, right? So they're polytheistic, so you know that there are a lot of gods, right? Multiple gods, right? That they would have um, worshipped in some sense or another, right? They did believe that the world was created by two brothers, right? And stuff like that, right? Um, but, you know, polytheistic and it's animistic in nature. Meaning that they would have been some amount of ancestral worship. Wonderful. Right? Wonderful, Sharona. Right? So, some amount of ancestral worship. Some amount of connection of giving spiritual um, characteristics. Right? Some type of spiritual personification. You get me? To inanimate objects. So, the Zemis would have been built out of things like um, ornaments, gemstones. These are for, you know, the caciques, you know. Built out of gold. And, uh, well, gold, etc. Right? Some regular Zemis would have been built out of stone or wood or something like that. 
So the stone figures would have represented the Zemi and generally each family would have a Zemi with a little um, altar, right? And the Kasi could have had, you know, the most Bosi, I guess, um, Zemi specifically, right? So we're speaking about that, all right? Mm -mm -mm. Anything else we can mention about them? About these first inhabitants of the Caribbean? Okay, let me check the chat real quick. Anything else that they would have done? All right, let me see. Okay, raids. Okay, let people in raids and celebrations of that. Okay, so we can talk about infrastructure then. Economic activities. Okay, let's talk about them. All right, let's speak about infrastructure. What is the type of infrastructure that the Tainos possess? And can you name the two types of, you know, infrastructure that we look at, all right? The type of house that the regular persons would live in and the type of house that the cacique would live in they have names not sure if anybody remembers you know the bohio and the canai wonderful tasha all right so the indigenous people would have built different types of structures usually built with wattle and daub right so it's a type of um, mud plaster and thatch right which is a type of wood fiber right so let me see if i can find a accurate description of a bohio right let me just look for it real quick so this oh these are differences between the um the bohio and the well this is generally how the bohio and the canai looks i'm not sure why this is not opening right so bibienda de los tainos right it's in spanish right so it's basically Roughly translating to the living quarters of the Tainos, right? So the Bohio would have been the living quarters of the of the Tainos specifically, right? While the Kanai would have been the living quarter of the Cacique, right? So the Bohio was as I hope you guys can see this picture accurately, right? Let me see if um let me zoom in a little bit more. Right, so we have something like this. So the bohio was usually smaller and has that type of round type of shape, while the canai was larger and more rectangular and had like a small mini veranda type of situation. Right, so those are general differences between their dwellings. Now they made wooden settlements. Wooden, it's made up of wood, thatch, wattle, and daub. Those different types of clay and mud mixtures that they use to seal the walls together. Right, so they were th that type of housing, right? Nothing was really made out of stone, per se. They did not build or erect large temples and those type of things. Those are what we call category two civilizations. Well, category one civilizations right which are you know the maya and the aztec but within the caribbean islands themselves right not talking about the mainland territories but within the islands themselves they would have formed structures out of these wooden materials right any questions yeah it is it is <laughs> it is tasha is there an issue Right, I'm just letting you guys know the information, right? So those are general dwellings. Anything else about um let's talk about um what the Tainos would have consumed. Anything that you guys remember about how you know sure. John, well, go ahead. Well, go ahead. Maize, which would be corn, Maze. cassava, Maze. iguana, cassava. which would make the pepper pot soup. Mm -hmm. Um yeah those and some others i don't remember at the moment but yeah all right okay so we have those type of things the main thing the cassava there and those type of stuff so they would have also eaten shellfish oysters crabs and scallops and all these different types of things eaten by the tainos they are not eaten by the kalinagos and we'll talk about that all right so they would have done some fishing right um they would have eaten animals like that goatee which has a tiny of it looks like a small it's a small forest rodent 
right and they also ate iguanas etc right and created different types of cooking methods some that some that we can see until t today right so we just spoken about the pepper pot right pepper pot has been adopted somewhat by the kalinago in some sense as well because we're going to talk about the fact that the kalinagos usually raided the tainos and kidnapped their women right so they they would have used their women right in order to you know bear kalinago children and all these different types of things use their women as well um to um raise their children as well right sometimes they didn't use the Taino women to bear children because they thought that a, a baby who was half breed was not strong enough as a what child you know bared by a Kalinago woman etc right but those things did happen and the Taino transferred some of their culture to the Kalinagos and I'm saying this because within islands today that have a large Kalinago influence they still have pepper pot as a variant within their country some of them has them has them as their national dish right for example there is a thriving Kalinago population on the island of Dominica all right so there are different aspects of that so we have this type of food that we really speak about right so we have cassava we use cassava um in things like bami cassava chips and different types of stuff right the, the tainos usually used cassava for creating different types of beverages right some um alcoholic beverages as well right um they also coined the general um method of barbecuing all right so they normally did that as well okay so that was one thing that they did as well right so the general method of cooking as well that we call barbecue it is from indigenous caribbean um culture right we also could speak about the cultivation of tobacco as one of the main things that they also had as well right and can anybody remind me what tobacco was used for specifically Sir, would it be for purposes? Alright, hold on, Sharon. I know that you're participating, you know, but I hear Sashel saying something. Was it Sashel? Go ahead. Okay, I'm not. Go ahead. To communicate with the ancestors. Alright, to communicate with the ancestors, right? So the use of tobacco to smoke, right, and use for religious ceremonies, right? That is similar to another type of contemporary Caribbean group that we would uh, we will look at, which is um, the Rastafari, um, in a sense, right? So we're going to be looking at them as well as we talk about intellectual traditions, right? So things like the potato, things like the cassava and maize and those type of things and different types of staples, right? They would have been cultivated. Right, and we're not gonna go in Kalinago's in depth, you know, because a lot of these things apply to both of them, right? So it's not really a lot, right? For trade and commerce, um, they would have traded, right, with different tribes because we know that the Kalinagos and the Tainos, the Tainos, let's say, talk, let's talk about Tainos, right, specifically. So the Tainos were not one big civilization, right? There was not one cacique who ruled all other tribes, right? There were different sections on islands right that had their little tribes their little communities set up and each community had a cacique right so the communities would trade amongst each other right so let's say that on hispaniola specifically right they had an abundance of wood right and and kalinagos on the island of Puerto, well sorry tainos on the island of puerto rico had an abundance of fish they would trade right so they built canoes and these different types of um implements and actually traded between islands some even have rumored that they have traded with the maya right but we're not going so far right so they did trade right specifically they trade with crafts and stuff like that they did um make huge canoes that would travel large distances right and some as i said some of them um are rumored to have gone into north america and into south america and into central america right so you had large canoes like that that they would go on for traveling and trading between islands all right everybody fine so far it's just a discussion of the information and yeah that's basically it go ahead anything any issue so far all right i'm not hearing anybody saying that they have an issue all right as it relates to the division of labor right 
um, as I said, a lot of these things apply to both groups, right? So as it relates to the division of labor specifically, the Kalinago and the Taino um, would have had the same general patriarchal system, right? So the women would have take care of, taken care of the children, etc. Um, they would have been cooking and cleaning, they would have been farming. Sometimes they would have hunt as well, but the men were known typically to hunt and to train and those type of th stuff, right? Where it differs is that with the Taino specifically, right, the men would have been trying to defend and hunt and those type of things, while the women would have created different types of crafts, right? So hand weaving, weaving cotton, right, and those type of stuff. For example, um, creation of hammocks and those type of things. Hammocks, hammocks are a indigenous Caribbean invention as well, right? Different types of baskets, aprons as well. They would have m made these different types of stuff, right? As well as general preparation of food and drinks, right? So they would have done this. And this type of social um, division, right? Or gender division of labor is actually apparent within most societies, even the ones that we so called deem as advanced, right? I'm speaking about the European societies, by the way, right? So we have that there, right? The way it differs from the Kalinagos is that. There's one key thing I would like to note that the the women in the Taino um, culture would have raised the children, right? But in Kalinago culture, when a young boy reaches around the age of five, they're about, he's taken away from his um, mother, right? He's taken away from his mother and put through a ritual, right? It's type of a, it's like a coming of age type of ceremony where he would be somewhat tortured in a way to see if he can survive battle, right? He would be put through a, a number of tasks, right? To see if he's truly to become a warrior, right? As I said, the Kalinago culture is more militaristic, right? So they would have been taken from their family to become warriors. If they did not survive that, then they would become tree, um, priests, right? Or healers in a type of sense, right? So they would have become priests, right if they did not become warriors so they were not completely raised by their um mothers right so that's one key difference that we could look at there right um is there anything else that you guys would like to highlight specifically um i think we could speak about leisure activities and the fact that we have um the activity called batos right so it's a type of um ball game that they would have played for leisure activities right so when they're not doing different types of ceremonies in which they would sing and dance and and actually take part in intoxicating food and drinks and stuff like that they would party right if it's not that then when they would enjoy a game of um of battles right it's called the battles b-a-t-u-s i believe right so it's a type of ancient ball game that these persons would have played right um, Poka Tok is actually Mayan in origin. So the Kalinago and the Taino would have played versions of Batos. Right? It is it could be possible that it borrowed from each other, right? But they have different names. Alright. So we spoke about that, right? So let's just sum it up. I don't want it to sound all jumbled. Right? So just to sum it up. Speaking about the Taino people, they have gender division of labor, right? We know the menial tasks, right, that each gender would have done within society, right? So we have the gender, well, the female gender, right, would have, um, the mothers um, would have taken care of the children, create, cooked food, did weaving, creating hammocks and, and um, weaving baskets, etc., right? Um, as it relates to leisure activities, they would have played battles, a ball game. As it relates to their culture and religion, right? We have different types of gods. They're polytheistic, um, they're animist as well, right? And their gods are described as zemis, right? So by the, so they had different types of gods. They have the god, they have gods associated with cassava, right? They have gods associated with volcanoes, right? So the same Las Sufir volcanoes and the 
Piton Volcanoes, right? Located across Montserrat, St. Lucia, right? Um, Dominica, right? We spoke about the geological definition of the Caribbean, right? There are gods assigned to these areas, right? Um, specifically, they have um, gods of female fertility, right? God of the sea, god of the moon, etc. Right? So they were polytheistic and they assigned, right, these different types of um, spiritual identities to objects as well. Right, so they're animistic. All right, so just letting you guys know that as it relates to agriculture and diet, they did farm, they did do subsistence farming, right? Um, farming general crops like potato, cassava, and maize, which are the general three different staples that they would have used specifically. Um, and they would have also fished as well, so shellfish, oysters, crabs, and those type of things that they would have consumed. They did eat small birds and small animals, and I mentioned the agouti and the iguana as well that they would have consumed, and special specifically in different types of methods. And you know the adventure of the method barbecuing, right, which is still a favorite in the Caribbean today, right, was invented by these indigenous people. Right, as it related to trade and commerce, I did mention the creation of large canoes that has facilitated transportation between the islands and they were able to trade between the islands specifically. Remember that the concept of bullionism, gonna talk about that, but the concept of money itself did not conceptually exist within their society, so they traded specifically, right? Um, in that specific way, right? So they traded objects for objects and not for specific time types of currency right also the political structure of the of the taino specifically they were individualized into different types of groups different types of settlements each settlement was headed by a cacique right who was hereditary right and there was no issue with the cacique being a female if there was only daughters that the cacique would have produced then the daughter would gain the title of cacique Right in some other cultures at this time, you know, the daughters would have never gotten cacique, probably the cacique's, you know, brother or something like that would have gotten it, right? But in con in this type of society, right, in this ancient Caribbean society, right, women could rise to 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 positions of power, right? So we have that specifically, right? Now, the Kalinago specifically, let's just speak about where the Kalinago differs, right? Um, within division of labor generally the same don't really have that much issues with that right as it relates to social life culture of the kalinago people they were less um docile than the taino right less docile so let me just put it as that they were more militaristic they were very keen on defense and they were very keen on attack they were very opportunistic right if there was an opportunity to gain from kalinago villages or from destroying or raiding settlements they would have done it right i don't like the notion of t telling them that they are warlike or anything like that right um because it just sounds weird to me specifically history is unbiased so they're militaristic right just like the europeans were militaristic right there are also other rumors and i would put them as rumors some pe some people believe them to be fact right but you just have to understand the way that i treat history is completely unbiased right so there are some rumors that say that kalinagos were um cannibals cannibals specifically do you guys agree with that notion if you agree you know agree right that i have no problem with that <laughs> if you agree you agree do you guys agree that the Kalinagos were cannibals as well nobody agrees with that notion if you agree with that notion drop a one in the chat <laughs> but you wouldn't put it <laughs> He wouldn't put it past them. All right. Um, interesting. All right. So, the Europeans have wrote, have written many stories about them being cannibalistic. Right. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't put that because that's a, that's what the syllabus in. Um, well, the syllabus does not say that. Right. But that's why a lot of persons will teach that they were cannibals. Right. But all I am saying is that if you're only getting accounts from your colonizer, please look into it a little bit more thank you right please look into it a little bit more 
Um, just saying that, right? But there are notions that they were cannibalistic as well, right? Um, their leisure activities, they would have ca captured some of these cultures from the Taino as well. Um, their religion, no, right? They worshipped um, the Maboya specifically. So they're not Zemis, right? It's called a Maboya. Um, let me see if I can type it in the chat, right? Hopefully, I can still spell Maboya. Um, let me just write it there in the chat. Yeah, that is it, right? So they're, they're spirits as well. They were animistic in nature as well. Um, mm, they're somewhat evil spirits that some people have believed, right? But because of the perceptions of the Kalinagos being evil, right? That's their perception of the Kalinagos. Them worshipping these spirits also assign the spirits evil, you know? You get what I'm saying? Because of how they are and they react because of their religious incentives, right? If uh, they're... I hope you guys understand what I'm saying, right? If they worship these gods specifically and they are this warlike, people then start to assume that the, those gods are those spirits are evil, right? But they did worship them in some respect, right? In some regard as well, right? So they would have had that type of religion as well, similar, polytheistic, animistic in nature, right? Um, so they had that as well. They also followed some types of myths as well. They wouldn't eat shellfish, right, before, like crabs or stuff like that because they thought that when they would walk sideways and stuff like that, they had some weird superstitions. They wouldn't eat pigs because they thought that they would, that would change um, their intelligence that would make them dumb. Um, they wouldn't eat some types of shellfish before a raid because they thought that eating these shellfish would actually cause a storm. And all sorts of different types of myths that the Kalinagos believe in. So they were really superstitious people. Right? Really, really superstitious. Right? They would have also eaten, right? Not sure about the human meat. That is your, you to, that is for you to decide. Right? But they would also have eaten different types of crops and different types of things that they Tainos would have eaten as well and they did practice subsistence farming right so they did farm um different types of things right so main crops like potato cassava maize and stuff like that they did farm them as well right it's just that they didn't really eat a lot of the seafood but they ate fish and stuff like that right so they would have had that as well okay Trade and commerce, they didn't really have so much trade and commerce, you know. They were more focused on taking other person's things, right? So they were more focused on raiding, right, to get their, um, what they're worth or their value, right? Um, so stuff like that. I'm not going too in-depth into the cultures, I'm just giving an overview. We might have to take another session to complete the historical process. But yeah, the political hierarchy, you know, of the Kalinagos, you now. The Kalinagos were not as hereditary as some person's may believe all right um because they had two leaders can anybody name the two leaders that the kalinagos possess what did they call it possess or the name of the two leaders anybody i know that you guys are itching to answer now so don't answer all at once the obutu wonderful and what is the name of the other the to be truly wonderful right so we normally just start it and say the to be truly go ahead jordan i'm saying that these are what two leaders for the kalinago tribe yes okay so the kalinagos would have two leaders the to be truly is a leader in times of peace right so they would have been um trained in the areas of the arts right in religion, in religious practices and stuff like that, in politics and governance, right? They would have been wonderfully adept in that, right?